But if I can make it back from having a kid to the podium, I am pretty sure I can make it back from going team, going individual again. Like, it doesn't mean that my career is over as an individual. All right, Annie, this is our first podcast where we are remote. So I am currently sitting in Idaho. It is early morning here, and you are in your afternoon in Iceland. So let's see how this works. Yeah, first one trying it like this. It took us a while, actually, to get this going because you had a snowstorm, and the internet went out when we were about to start last week. Uh, So, yeah, we made this happen. We made this happen and let's see how it works it's kind of cool because like it's a couple times a year that we get to be together in Iceland there's nothing like being in proximity and getting to actually like feed up each other's energy but I love this and we're gonna have weekly catch-up calls that we actually just sit here and chat and we talked about a lot yesterday of what we wanted to talk about we have so many things that we want to discuss a couple of things that again kind of like feeding off of last our last podcast is these past couple of years um, and two things. The one that I really want to dive into with you is teams versus individual um, and what that was like for you. Cause that's a huge change. And I think a, a bigger change than even you realized like when oh, you go yeah. through so amazing in so many ways and so challenging in so many ways. And, and I'd love to ask you about that. And then coaching changes for me. I'm yes. now in three coaches and I have, I've had this same coach for so long. And so have you. And, and it's a, it's a huge thing. It's also a natural thing. And just to dive into that a little bit. Yeah. I'm really excited to talk about, like you said, there were so many things that we wanted to talk about yesterday. And like when we started this, we have like this list and then actually the comments that you guys also gave us on the last podcast with like maybe things that you wanted us to talk about. We will get into a lot of those. Um, but yeah, we I think this will be a great second podcast. So so the first thing that I do want to ask you is like, when did it first cross your mind that you might want to go team? Honestly, like I've thought about going a team for years now. Um, ever since probably 2016, mm-hmm. well, 2015 maybe even. It's like, who knows when it's going to be your last year competing as an individual? Who knows for how many years you're going to be able to do this? Even like 2012 is like, for how much longer do you continue? How how many years is your body going to give you? How many years is your mind going to give you? Like, how much longer are you going to want to do this? And for me, it's always had to be like one year at a time. And especially after I got my back injury, it was like, I cannot make multiple year like plan. It has to be just one year at a time. And then after the games, I have a little bit of a downtime. And then it's like, what do I feel like? How was this year competing? How does my body feel like? Where's my mind at? Like, did I enjoy this season? Because even when I started this, it was there was no money in CrossFit. Like you could win, I think, like a five hundred dollar gift card or two thousand dollar gift card or whatever, like that first year or a rower or something. Like it was, you did it for the title and you did it yeah. because it was fun. We were challenging ourselves and getting better, and it was, I think, in some ways, like the sport I have been looking for for years, um, and. Therefore, I've been thinking like, okay, when you're not doing individual anymore, it would be really fun to try to go on a team. Um, but I've never really known like I wanted to go on a team with you uh, or someone that just like BK or whatever that would be in Iceland. But like I've always known like you guys aren't ready. And then I've never really been ready when I when it comes down to making the decision. I'm always yeah. like, I want to do one more year. I want to do one more year. (laughs) And then I had a baby and I managed to come back and compete at the games after that. So I was like, why do I always need to wait one more year, one more year? 
uh, because of that fear, I thought if I would go team, I wouldn't be able to go individual again. But if I can make it back from having a kid to the podium, I am pretty sure I can make it back from going team, going individual again. Like, it doesn't mean that my career is over (laughs) as an individual. So I think that kind of gave me the courage to just like, try it out. And I have been competing as an individual for so many years, like over a decade, I've been competing as an individual. And I think I wanted to just like, see what it would be like. And I know it surprised a lot of people, especially where I was like, at the games, like coming third place at the games. And then like, I felt like I could, I wanted to try to win the CrossFit Games the year after. But at the same time, I also really wanted to try to go a team. And when the right team came together, it was just like, yeah, I'm doing this. And I knew I was going to grow so much as a person yeah. by going a team. Um, what was your process like? Because that's a big thing, finding. And we know that what we do, we do every day, we do it twice a day. It's the people that you hang out with the most. It's the people that you're most connected to throughout the year. How did you choose your team? Because you picked three individuals that were moving from all over the world, literally Australia and then East Coast and West Coast of the United States. So how did your team come about and what did you think about when you're picking a team? Because it's four individuals. You kind of, you need certain things on a team and it helps to have certain strengths, but you also you have certain weaknesses and does that help to like fill those weaknesses? If that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, it was actually quite hard for me to try to think who should be on the team because I haven't been on the team before. I've only competed <laughs> at invitationals and it was just like, <laughs> all right, what matters, honestly, I've always said this. If I would ever go team, it doesn't just matter to me how good the individuals are. It matters to me their mindset and the work that they're willing to put in. Because as long as I know that you gave your best and you die on the floor, I know that we did everything that we could and I can't control more than that. But someone with like a bad attitude or someone that's not willing to put in, like all I ask for is that they put in the same amount of work as I'm going to be putting in. Uh, And that Mm -hmm. was very clear also when I talked to these guys, it was like, so this is how it's going to be. We're training this many uh, days of the week. These are the hours we're most likely going to be training at. And then like, I didn't want to go into everything, how it's going to be like sleep and eat and all of that. But it's like, we're going to be committing to this. And I also knew like, if you're moving to Iceland to go on a team, you're going to be committing to try to win the cross the games. Like I wasn't just doing it to like, yay, let's do a team. It was like, (laughs) oh, I want to and win the CrossFit Games. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the process of choosing the team, it was – I obviously talked to Frederick a lot about it. I talked to Yami about uh, individuals, and I shot a few – I honestly, it was just through, like, Instagram. It was just like, hey, you want to go t- – you want to move to Iceland and go team with me? <laughs> I wasn't, like, sugarcoating it and just, like, you want to jump on a phone call. It was like – so, what do you think? Um, Buddy Annie doesn't sugarcoat anything. It's one of my favorite things about you. <laughs> and they all came to know that, that I just speak my mind. No, like, I I honestly think communications, you should just be upfront and know as I long agree. as we align our expectations, we're not going to be disappointed. Like, no one is going to be disappointed. So, yeah, I ended up... Talking to Lauren, like, I obviously thought it would be very important to have a strong female athlete, uh, someone I was looking for, someone that would be potentially, like, good on the rings and gymnastics and strong. And I have confidence in building people's endurance. Um, And then I wanted to have some, on the male side, someone that would be strong, good at gymnastics, and I could try to build an engine for And someone preferably that I've been on a team before that would know how a team works. And both Lauren and Tola crossed those boxes. Um, I knew Tola from the grid. And then um, 
I did obviously I sent a couple of more I did talk to like Pat Valner and Brent Fikowski just like hey I want to go to team and I love that Pat he wrote like did BK ask you to ask me he doesn't want to compete against yeah. me anymore <laughs> it was like oh BK I paid a lot for that yeah so okay. I, I I had a lot of good conversations actually um fun yeah no actually I didn't have a lot of conversations it came together like fairly a uh, fast um but then I hadn't thought about anyone from Australia. And then like Khan popped on my Instagram and I'm like, oh my God, he'll be great on a team. Like I didn't know him at all really as a person apart from his social media and how he is as an athlete. And I had just seen like, he will just bury himself. He's like a, a friend of mine here in Iceland that I've gone on a team with called Gia. Uh, she will just like, she doesn't care what she looks like. She doesn't care. She's like drooling on the ground or dying or whatever it is. She will like always give you that extra rep. And I'm like, that's the person I want. Such uh, a good trust those teammates. Yes. So, they will go to extreme lengths on the competition floor. And it's so admirable. Exactly. I want someone that will be like, you see a workout and I don't know, like it ends up with a... 500 meter row let's say something that everyone can relate to it ends with a 500 meter row um I want a team where everyone would step up like I can do that like I'll do that for you like not meaning that they would necessarily have to be the best at it but someone that would be like I will do this for you and I will kill myself here like yeah. I think I could be the best for the team like not someone that will step back and be like oh I don't know I don't know make me do this here instead because this isn't going to hurt as much like I want people not to be afraid of the pain and Khan was like I am so so grateful that we ended up getting him on the team because it made this like that w I was also worried about that right you're spending so much time with these people don't really know them that well they're moving to Iceland and I worry about them being happy comfortable all of that but also like us getting along but I feel like the personalities balance each other's out like quite well the dynamic was really good on the team and like honestly it couldn't have been a lot better Except for if you would have been on my team cat, but like <laughs> it was, uh, so it was uh, good. It was, it, we had a lot of fun. And like I said, I grew so much, like not only as an athlete, but as a person being on a team, it was so different training and the mentality and everything. What did you find was your biggest challenge as being on a team? Hmm. I guess I was expecting my freedom to be more <laughs> going on yeah. a team, but it ended up being the exact opposite. Like even for me just to go to the summer house, like I go, like going there sometimes over the weekends, but that meant that maybe I would skip one or two training sessions on Saturday and I would do them at the summer house instead. But I felt like mm, I was worried about it coming down on their training or if they thought that I wasn't doing my work at the summer house, then they maybe wouldn't do as much work. Like, I know they wouldn't do that, but still I was just like, I knew that we had to get the very most out of every single session. So we couldn't lose sessions. And I felt like if I was there, the quality might be better of the training sessions. Mm -hmm. And going from having so much freedom like I am pretty structured I usually train at the same times and all of that but like always training in a group yeah. was definitely different just like having to get used to that and like obviously you know, if you had something come up at lunch or Freya yes. was long out of the house this morning yeah you don't have the freedom to change that time it's like yeah no you have a team waiting on you exactly yeah. like Freya getting sick or something and then Normally, I would just change up the day a little bit, make sure that I'm training while she's asleep or whatever. Like, there, it was a lot harder for me to do those changes. Yeah. 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 And what was, like, your biggest area of growth, do you feel like, that came out of this year? Or learnings or growth or challenges that you overcame? I think understanding people. 
better. Mm. Like, I feel like I've had decent communications with people before, like uh, fairly easy communications with people, but just like, mm, that we're, that we don't all think the same, that we need different things. And I've always known that we're not all the same, but I've been like, okay, professional athletes are always going to have it like this, this, and that, because I have that structure. So I feel like everyone must have this structure, you know, but I don't think it's like that. And Mm -hmm. I can't go in and start controlling someone's diet and someone's like (laughs) sleeping habits and what they do in their free time. It's like, obviously you can't go that far, but like, yeah, I... I definitely learned just just to communicate even more and even better than I feel like I've done before in a way that I had to like also pull back a little bit. It's like it's really hard going from obviously like first thing I have Freya and then all of a sudden you're going from the athlete lifestyle of your number one, two, and three. Like you need to put your priority first. You need to put your sleep first. You need to put your eating first. But all of a sudden it's like, no, 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 no. She's number one, two, three. And then I'm here somewhere like number eight, nine, or 10, you know? Um, And then having these guys come over, it's like, obviously I had certain things I had to work on, but then I also wanted to help them work on things that they had to work on and if in any way I could assist then I would have my training maybe come second and my body work like I would rather have Yami help them out than have him help me out because I knew I would be able to resolve it maybe better but like it ended up me compromising a lot for myself for them for like the greater good, you know? (laughs) So that was something that I had to learn as well. Just like, and it was, I, I learned that I need to sometimes take a step back as well. Like I'm, I found out some of my biggest weaknesses and strength throughout this process. Like I'm, I've always known that I'm an empathetic person, but I can sometimes be, I know it sounds weird to say that as like a fault, but it's sometimes I can go too far with it, you know? Um, so it really matters to me that, for example, them coming here, it just really mattered to me that they had it good, that they were comfortable, that they were happy, that there weren't issues. And it was like when, just a good example, like their car got stuck in the snow and they were like late for training and they were like trying to figure it out. And Lauren was just like sending me updates on it. And I was like, oh my God, Frederick, I think we need to go there. Like, let's find a shovel. Let's go and like help them take out the car. And then, and the friend is like, what? Any, they're grownups. They can get their car out. And I'm like, oh my God, of course, they're probably going to have their car out by the time we get there. Like they have a shovel Khan and Tola know how to do this. Lauren can assist. She was just giving me up. Th- yes, exactly. It was like, yeah. And when Khan was struggling a little bit in the beginning with the darkness and being like, it's dark. And we had so many snowstorms in Iceland for that first period. I was like feeling so bad. It was so bad. Yeah. Insane. So I was like feeling so bad about it and like guilty. And I'm like, okay, Annie, you need to like F and calm down. You're not in control of this situation. Like, but it helped. Like, it's not always like, this is really bad. Just, yeah, know, like, not better. I promise I didn't know what's going to be like that. No, <laughs> but it ended up being like such a great experience. Like I yeah. learned so much and I start, I came to love these guys so much, like every single one of them. An incredible team. You're yes. Really an incredible group of people. Yes. Not just not just to, not just individually, but also how they came together. Absolutely. And that was so- okay, that that weaves me into what was your favorite part? Like, what was overall, just in general, or do you have a specific like moment that you just remember and like will treasure from? this year with the team I think like just stepping onto the floor with your team 
celebrating with your team. Like I've only been as an individual and yes, I have an incredible team around me, like you know, and I've yeah. always had like such a good team and support. So I never feel like I'm alone, but when you're on the floor, you are alone. Like yeah. they're not going to be able to step in and do anything for me. They're, like their yelling isn't going to do anything. Someone's shitty comments aren't going to do anything. Like nothing is going to do anything when you're on the floor. It is just you and mm -hmm. what you do that matters. And now all of a sudden I would like walk out to the floor and I would have at least three individuals with me to support me and me to support them. And yeah. like, that was really cool. Like mm -hmm. finishing workouts. I'm saying a lot of like, I'll try to take that out. Um, but finish <laughs> <laughs> finishing workouts and celebrating with them, like, especially semifinals and oh my gosh when we finish the run at the games like there's like certain events just stick out like that where yeah. you're like celebrating with your team and some obstacles that we've had or been nervous about in the past or something or worked really hard on and have paid off and obviously yeah. paid off it's those wins were even bigger with the team on the floor but at the same time It was so hard to stand on the floor and not being able to help in the events yeah. where you weren't allowed to help. So I would like to see more yeah. where you can like assist each other more. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. That's something that I have never really been on a team the same as you have done um, invitationals, which was so fun. And like yeah. we done, it was so fun. The couples competition that we did in Denmark. Yes. And those times where like both of us know how to push ourselves really hard and like honestly what you said like at the start of CrossFit when you're like there wasn't a lot of money in it but you do it for the title and I still feel like that's the biggest push like you do it for the pride and you do it because you want to be the best and you work for it and you want to see how hard you can push yourself and like that in itself pushes us so far yes. but being on the floor it I honestly it It surprised me and it didn't, but like I would push myself even harder because I know how hard you push yourself. And I know the standard at which you perform and expect of yourself. And I wanted to match that. And I wanted to do that for you. So when everything's got hard, like remember that <laughs> that I don't yes. think I felt as bad in a workout. Like we went so hard. It was this interval workout. Like I go, you go style. And it was On so machines. Yes, only machines. And it was so hard. But I just remember like doing it not only for myself, but for you. Yes. And like, like you're nervous before a workout. But if it's me and you, it's like, okay, like, let's do this. And the same like coming across the finish line with you like, yeah, it's fun by yourself. And either you're disappointed by yourself or you're really proud of yourself. But there you get to share it with somebody. And that's something that like, a, I saw with your team and something that like, I hope we get to experience on time and I hope we get to be on a team. And that's like what I see as because both of us have been individuals for now, almost the majority of our career, you've gone team once, but like we very much count on ourselves. And that's yeah. such a cool thing to like, I believe in my imagination that it magnifies <laughs> all experiences, you yeah. know, like. I think so too. Like even when you were just talking about the experience, like when we were competing there, I got like goosebumps and my heart started racing. I'm like, oh my God, yes, I do remember that event. And that's the feeling that you get. And that's why like now going to the games and competing, I think it's the fittest I've ever been. Like, yeah. I don't think I was any less fit going on a team than I've been in the past going as an individual because there wasn't even though I was maybe expecting it to be a little bit less volume or something, it, it wasn't Yeah. because I'm like, I'm not going to be the one that's going to be holding the team back when we're running. I'm not going to be the one that's going to be holding the team back when we're doing ring muscle ups. So I ended up wanting to be like, I need to work on my weaknesses. I need to fix up my holds. Like all of a sudden I had this sense of urgency I've never even had before. Yeah. So Yeah. With maybe being like, okay, Lauren is stronger at ring muscle ups, she'll pick us up there. It's like, no, I need to improve my ring muscle ups too. I need to catch up It's with her. Yes. Yes. Yes.
That's such a cool thing. It was really, really cool. Yeah. What was it that did you feel like at this games that you missed being on the floor individually? Was it strange going back to individual at Rogue or like how did that feel standing alone on the competition floor again? Like yes and no. Um, I don't think I really missed it at the games because I was focused on my team and competing as a team. There's plenty of things that you have to think about. But of course, I looked at some of the events and I'm like, oh my God, that's a sick event. I think I would do great in that. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to try that event out. Like the stall bar dips event. And like there were there were quite a lot of really, really cool events, I feel, um, at the games. So it was obviously I would have wanted to do that as well. Uh, but I didn't miss it because I, I was very happy no matter how it would go. I was happy with my decision because of everything that I had learned that year and because I got to know these three new individuals. Like they became a part of my family, you know, like they're a part of the crew. And yeah. that's something I wouldn't change. Um However, it wasn't weird at all competing as an individual at Rogues. Like, it was right where I'd left it. <laughs> it, was, it was fine. Yes, I missed having someone walking out to the floor with. Like, your nerves are a little bit different. Uh, being with someone that you kind of, kind of, like, like I told you before the run event at Rogues, I just get really nervous. And it made me miss you even more than it's done in the past because at least usually I have you there as my yeah. like I don't know we give each other like that look like we're got we're gonna go we got this I got you you got me we got this let's f and go we worked hard for this and like just missed then um I guess but getting there too that was something that I don't know people might not know this but like we, like, at least me and you, like, you, we compete individually, but, I mean, we've trained together day in, day out for so many years. Like, we know each other. We know what each other's capable of. We know kind of by, just by your body language and your energy, like, how are you feeling and what you need. Yeah. Because, like, it's hard and it's nervous. There's so much comfort in like having you there. So like we spend so much time together when we compete just on buses on like, we have to walk from like our athlete area to our warm up area from a warm up area to our corrals. And we just, we might not even say anything. We just always walk together. Exactly. And, and even on things like those run events, like, we kind of know if it's a run event, if it's a, for some reason too, we were so lucky, like on the marathon row, like our oh. names are like next to each other. So things like that. That was we... seriously one of my favorite events because I just got to spend so much time with you. <laughs> I wasn't nervous at all because you were just right there. Right I, there. I don't know if you guys know, but I had these like long conversations with Kat while we were on that rower. Like I was constantly talking to her. <laughs> this is like so I so both you and Brooks is one of my favorite. I because I'm I'm gonna say this all the time because I have a trillion and a million things that I love about the two of you, but one <laughs> of the I love is that both of you say things out loud all the time. I always know what you're thinking. It is <laughs> even in the Annie's very vocal. Like when she works out, she'll be like, "Okay, come on!" Like in the middle of an interval, she's like, "Okay, like we're halfway there. Come on, like we can do this." Like what she's thinking and telling herself, she's like telling me too. And Brooks, the same thing. He might just be putting, he's like, okay, yes. Like here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to like finish putting that. And I'm like, huh? And he's like, oh no, I'm just like thinking out loud. You know, yeah, like, exactly. I think out loud. And I love, I'm very like internal. So I'm receiving what you're saying. Like, I'm like, yes. Like in my head, I'm like, yep. <laughs> we got, I'm like acknowledging all of it in my head. But the reality is that Annie's talking and I'm silent. <laughs> I'm oh, like, yeah, the whole time. Kat didn't say one on. word the whole time. And I'm like, yeah, we're already 2K in, Kat. <laughs> this is fine. And I'm like, oh, my butt's starting to hurt a little. I'm going to move the mat out now. Now it's time for a drink. It's like, <laughs> I felt like we were just sitting down watching like a Netflix show together or something, that marathon row. But yeah, that was really funny. 
one of my favorite events that you've done. Like, I'm not, I know you love rowing and you're very good at it. And I'm not bad at rowing either, but don't love it as much as you do. But for <laughs> and like, if I had to go do a marathon row now in the garage, like I'd be like, kind of be dreading it to be honest. But at the games, it was really fun. It was really fun. Yeah. Like, right there next to me we had the screen up there where it showed everybody's pace like what they're currently holding what their average pace is like you can kind of see like oh are they making a move like are they not like what are they holding and then you can kind of like play a game with like see who's right in front of you and like okay i'm gonna make a move and try and catch that person like you're just doing something something to play with so we've kind of been on a team kind no but that's like the feeling that's the feeling that i God, just even even more so because we were actually on a team. Yeah. Now, to you, Ken, there has been a lot of changes. I did get you for a year, which was one of the most incredible things ever. Unfortunately, I wasn't competing individual uh, mm-hmm. at the same time. It would have been pretty cool to get that kind of season together. Um, it would have been so But we still did get, we showed up at the same time every day, yes. twice a day. For the majority, unless besides your team training practices, like we did do everything together. Everything else was together. And that was so much fun. Yeah. But yeah, there's been some coaching changes. And like, that's something that anything, whether it's brands you work with or coaches that you work with, like loyalty is one of my like core values. It really is. And I, it's not like, it's not a natural thing, I believe, to change teams a lot or people around you or anything like that. And I spent eight years with Ben up at CFNE, and it was incredible. Like, I think by like, they're my family. Yeah, and exactly. So that's a huge decision to make. Huge thing. So I think it's also like very important to know that that decision a it was the hardest decision that I have ever made in my life and also that it was a purely athletic decision so there's still some of my closest friends like Harley loves the youngest one she's like my little sister you know I, I FaceTime her regularly um so of course it does put a little strain on the relationship it's a huge thing to yeah. leave but it's also a very understandable thing and it is is a very natural thing after eight years like we really I believe that me and Ben maximized our time together and he has incredible strengths and I believe it's mindset endurance just like grit persistence there's so much that I got really 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 good at and that you could see that at the games I was um consistently in the top three to five in the same events again and again and again. Like, I would win events. Yes. But I was also consistently in the bottom ten in the games. And the bottom ten gets no points, whether it was strength events, higher up muscle-up events, or legless events. So that's a hard thing to look at. And as an athlete saying that I want to be the best in the world. And, yeah, I was keeping my strengths, but the field... And I was improving. I think that's an important thing to say that I was working on these things and I was improving. I was just not improving at the same rate as the field and my competitors. And that's a hard thing to kind of look at yourself again and again, because after every year you do kind of look in the mirror and look back at the year and you're like, okay, like what did we do right? And what did we do wrong? And when you're constantly looking at the same thing, because mistakes are okay. Mistakes are very, mistakes will happen. Yep. And you'll come up short and that's okay. And then you should reevaluate and, and see what we can do better and see what we can do differently. But when it's this same mistake again and again and again, it starts to be, it's really hard for me to look at myself again. And I was just starting to feel embarrassed by it because I take pride in like what I do and how I show up and and saying that I want to work on these things and I want to be able to compete at everything. I know there are certain events that even though I'm not going to be able to be top three or five, I want to get into the top half. And then I want us to get into the top 15 and, and know that I can maybe be a top 10 competitor in my worst events. And then you want to be able to compete to be the best in your best events. Yeah. Um, so 
hardest decision that I've made, but as an athlete, I made that decision for myself. Just like you said, you kind of, I've been taking this year by year too. Like I, you do, you end a year and you're like, I'm healthy. I love what I do. And most of all, I always kind of feel like, do I still have like untapped potential? Do I still believe that I can get better? And the answer's always been yes. So I'm like, let's do it again. And I always feel like I can still get better. So I want to do it again. But it's like the biggest motivator, right? Yes. Knowing that you can continue improving. And honestly, that's exciting to see the gaps that you have so that you can try to fix them and make them become smaller and smaller. So you understand that if, because I know how you are, you go full in, you want to win their CrossFit games, you want to be the best in the world. And then you want to know that you're doing everything that you can to become the best in the world. But if you make the same mistake again and again and again, then that's obviously you're not learning from it. Yes, are not doing something right. Um, yeah. So of course, every year you 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 make the best decision with what you have and where you're at. So like, I I do give myself grace for that. That I do the best with what I believe was the best, and I can look back and maybe see that like I wish I would have been doing that. I wish I would have seen this. And oh my um, god, I think all of us have that. Of- I have that almost yeah. every single year. There's something like. Yeah. Oh, I knew I should have done more of this. And then you fix it for the next year. Yeah. So that was that decision of like wanting, but yeah, saying the year by year thing. Also the opposite of that it too, is that I'm going to be 30 next year. And I know that's not a huge age and I'm still in my prime, <laughs> but I don't want to take those years for granted. Yeah. I really athlete life can take an end in an instant and I just want I appreciate and so grateful for every year that I have and every year that I'm healthy and every year that I have a fire to keep doing this so it was just a decision that like these years don't keep coming and I can't keep having the same conversation and the same like wish I would have fixed that like the same mistake again and again and I needed to for myself as an athlete to make a change and to see okay what is possible somewhere else and I will always live with everything that I have learned with Ben and I take that on with me can I now go learn something else from somebody else and that was an a extremely scary change because Mm -hmm. I was close with Ben, he knew me so well. We had been doing the same thing for so long. And then a lot of things had been working extreme. We had an incredible career. We had four podium finishes together. So that's incredible. And then it's extremely scary to now start trusting somebody else, start doing something different to make a move. But it's also very exciting. So last year, I... And again, I've known Yami since I started going to his gym when he owned CrossFit Thames in London. So my dad's from London and I'd go visit a couple times a year. Um, He's been your coach since 2010. Yeah, 2010. So I didn't start in 2011. And I, I mean, I started because I saw you in the CrossFit games and like, I just wanted to do what you were doing and be like you. And even though we weren't even um, friends like this, we knew each other. Yeah. Um, but in 11, like I knew that he was your coach. And so like when I went to London, I remember asking my dad, like, can I go to CrossFit Thames? Like I want to go to CrossFit Thames and like just went and I took class there and I just thought it was the coolest thing. So I've known Yami briefly since then, but then he's come and coached you and I said, when we've both been there. So I always had a great relationship with him and he is so technical and so detailed and so methodical and very different from Ben. And there's not a right or a wrong. They're both, they're phenomenal in their own rights. Do you have five podiums with him? You know, like BK has, like, it all speaks for itself. It's uh, how these, I have six. Six, sorry, I took a podium away. <laughs> I was like, do I have? You're like, let's, I, I know. Six. Six. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so phenomenal, yeah. it was so different from what I was used to. And I was 
A, scared because it was so different, but also excited. So like, maybe this is better for me. Like maybe this will improve certain things. And there was so much that I didn't prove. There was like, I, that does suck that, and we talked about this, like the results that I got last year of not making the games are extremely disappointing. And honestly, like I, I was embarrassed but I also, I did not feel as bad as the results were, if that makes any sense. Like I oh, actually- 100%, I think we've talked about that. Like it was, you, yeah, it's- I was proud of what we had done. And yeah, I did feel like we improved so much. I just feel like I was in a, we've talked about this. I was in a strange place of like, the toughest thing that ever happened to me was that I didn't trust myself anymore. And mm-hmm. that's a hard thing to trust myself. And- so I'm putting a lot of trust into like Yami and what he does and what you do. And it's also, it's a collaboration too. Like I also need to trust that like, I know what is best. And I feel like I was making kind of like silly mistakes and competition of like, honestly, out of like, um, honestly, out of like fear, you know, I was so scared of like, what if, like, what if I'm not good enough? Look like, what if I just, I've done this for so long. I know what to do. Like, I need to trust myself. I trust you. So, yeah. So there was just a lot of that going on, too, that, like, I need to tackle and take head on. And I um, just trust myself. So, so much great there. But the same thing, like, in any relationship, like, just because he's worked so well for you and for BK, and he is an incredible coach, uh, the same thing that doesn't always mean that the one thing goes for everybody um and I had an incredible year training with him and learning from him and just learning like I think the things that was just like how to use my body and how like different things like work and activate and like I learned so much and I got to be home and I got to train with you so that was another one of like it's so hard to make that decision and like he too poured so much into me. You know, he did yeah. everything that he could to make me better. And I did get better. I really did. And I'm so grateful for that and grateful for you and for Yami for, and Frederick. Frederick's such a huge part of that team. And I don't think anybody knows how much he, he's like, she can't even help himself. He just like, he needs to pour, even if, if he's in the middle of a workout, he will stop to assist and help to help someone. Yes. Uh, really well. So, so much was poured into me. So it was another one of those decisions that, um, it was hard to make and the loyalty in me just like wants to stay and continue. And I, I do acknowledge that one year, it was, it's base building. You don't see that just because I didn't make it to the games, that wasn't what we had done that year. But I was very excited too. And I'm now with HWPO and Matt. And that was a transition that I was so excited about and believed was the best for me. So it wasn't that, A, like, it's not that Yami is not a good choice or Ben's not a good choice. I just, I treasure and value each year so much and it I'm aware it's a selfish decision but it has to be when you're an athlete and you take each year at a time what do I believe is the absolute best place for me to be and it was such honestly a natural transition for me because it kind of and it's it's in a strange way but I felt like just going home you know, like me and Matt were training partners for so we were like siblings, like we would get at each other and not even always like, like each other, but we always loved each other. <laughs> yeah. We just get out. So he knows me so well. Yes. Amy, his wife, um, she was like my girl. Like we worked together when we were both at Reebok. We worked together when she was working with O'Keefe and O'Keefe is our agent and O'Keefe runs HLPO. So he's there too. I've worked with him since 2014. Like they're all like my family. Sammy's in my home right now. Like she's just like, she's an incredible, incredible, always been an incredible friend for me. Um, and Matt, I believe just doesn't get it wrong. You know, it's really... Yeah. And the more time, like, even after his career, like, him and Sammy came up here and they spent some time and, like, 
just like getting to pick his brain, I'm just continually more impressed. Like it used to be his work ethic. And now I'm like, he was telling me more about how we think about things. I'm like, holy shit, he's smart. Like that's, he just breaks things down into, he's an engineer. He just breaks things down. So like it honestly, not that it's going to be easy, but it's simple. He's like, we just need to do this, 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 this. I'm like, hmm, okay. And then like, just seeing his like continue like how much he like dives into things and like moving patterns and energy systems and time domains and what he did that's it to be completely honest it's been a lot it's been so much <laughs> um so it's been incredible and I am really happy with that change and I am really happy with what I'm doing so again I think like, it's really cool like you said it's not i it's not about someone not being good. Obviously, there's some yeah. coaches out there that maybe are not as good as the others. And I truly believe Yami is one of the best coaches out there, period. Uh, um, but I, I think, agree. like you said, you had gotten so much from Ben. And then you needed something different maybe to get you to that next level or fix your holes. And then... As an athlete, you need to make that decision that's going to be the des- best decision for your career and your future. And then you try it with Yami, you learn a lot there. And then it's like, okay, now I know, like, Matt, I know that relationship that you have with him as well. And, like, the more I've gotten to know him, the more I appreciate him as also just, like, like you said, it's just fun to talk to him because he's really smart. He thinks about things in detail, like... I love numbers. I love when you can say like this here, this here, this here, and then this is going to be the results. Like that's how I work. Like I like that. I like working with numbers. I like the different energy systems. I like that. So it's, it's fun to talk about those things. Um, Yeah. So it's like you want to optimize what you can get to become the best athlete that you can be. There's yeah. a reason why we seek out experts in running to help with the running programming, why we seek out experts in only lifting to help out with the Olympic weightlifting programming. It's like filling in the holes that need to be filled in. And I think that's really important. And yeah. I feel like you need to, it's you that needs to live with the decision. So it's you that needs to make the decision yeah. that's going to be right for you. It's you that needs to trust that you're making the right decision for you. And I think that's something that, like, throughout the years, I've learned about myself and, like, I'm always getting better at it is, like, just trusting my gut. And, like, there's so much, I think, in life and in general that you hold yourself back with because you don't want to disappoint somebody or let somebody hurt somebody's feelings. So you don't make the decision that you believe is best for you. You know, it was, I could have not made any of those coaching switches and I still would have been in a good spot. But when I believe that I had an option that I think was better for me, I, I made that decision and I am proud of those decisions. I mean, there's been two of them and I, I hope that I make the right decision and I, and I, I do trust and believe that. And it's just, it is crazy how the universe works and I can't remember if I shared this on the last podcast, but I for sure shared this with you that a year ago I was, I love New Year's. It's it's my favorite holiday. I love reflecting on the past year. I love thinking on the upcoming year of like, what do I want? What do I want for myself and my relationships, my career, my life, how I'm, how I'm feeling, um, my relationship with myself and I, it's always very revealing because what you want is normally, you know, there's a center of like myself and there's a core. And I feel like if you get pulled into some other direction, like you start craving it back. Like um, one year, I remember my, the, the word was peace. I just wanted to feel like this peace inside of myself. And like, I feel like that means that I was pulled in some sort of direction where I was like resisting something and like being pulled, yeah. like not being completely like congruent with myself and last year the word that I came up with was fire I wanted to find my fire again and I believe a very 
determined, driven, passionate person. Like I'm excited about things. I love what I get to do. And for some reason, like I'd gotten pulled away from that. Maybe it was that I felt like I needed to do something or had to do something. Like why wasn't the fire there with what I wanted to do? And I wanted to find my fire. And this wasn't the way that I wanted to find my fire. Like (laughs) when I said I was going to find my fire, but the universe gave me something that had me find my fire again. It lit something in my belly and I have my fire again. So I love that. Like I wrote that down. I wanted that. This wasn't my plan, but the universe gave me exactly what I want. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's not, it doesn't always come the way that we want it, but I feel I feel that's used very often how it needs to be. Every time there's been like a tough year, I've come back stronger, better with more fire, like with that drive, the passion. And it's been the same for you. So therefore, I'm pretty excited for you this year or the year that's coming up. Yes, the year that's coming up. So it's currently December. And And I I think that's one of the most important things as well is not looking backwards, but learning from your mistakes and then looking forward and trusting your God, like trusting that you made the right decision because it is like, I've also talked about this with you, but I think it's so important that we take responsibility in Absolutely. our careers and in what we do obviously it's we that put in the work it's we that make sure that we're eating enough and eating the right things and making sure that we get the right amount of sleep and we're recovering and getting the body work that we need and obviously we're putting trust in our coaches for the right programming and we're putting trust in the people that work in our bodies to do the right things to help us out and we have to be able to give that trust but we also need to take responsibility in the coaches that we work with, the team that we surround ourselves with. And then when we win, it's our win, obviously. It's the team around us that wins as well. But it is your work that got you that win. And when we lose, it's also our loss. And I think, at least for me, that's been something important. I would never want to look at it and start putting fingers or blaming it's like oh this didn't do enough of that or Yami didn't program enough running for me this year or that Oli coach like that programming didn't make enough sense like I obviously put trust in and I also know that they take responsibility for certain things but ultimately I think we need to take the responsibility because it's our decisions and it's us that are on the floor. And therefore, you also need to make the right decisions for you. You can do it the right way so that you're not hurting other people's feelings uh, by being honest and talking about things. But that's why I think it's so important to be open and honest in the relationships that we also have with our coaches and the team around us. I love what you just said. Like, I love, love, love. Both of us have stood on top of the podium. Both of us know what it feels like when we're ready, when we feel like our lungs are there, when we feel like our legs are there, when we feel like we're strong, when we feel like we're fit. We know these feelings. So even though, yes, we seek out the best coaches in the world and all different faucets, and we have our, like, main coach, and then we have our strength coach or weightlifting coach or running coach. Like, we've worked with different people. Um we know and our guts always tell us and that's on us too to speak up when we feel like I feel like my running isn't where it should be I feel exactly and take responsibility for that because ultimately like yeah we could be upset with why didn't put more on this or more of this and it's ultimately us standing out on the floor and and then we need to be vocal about it yes and we need to be proud and we need to know that like yes we did the right work when we get there so exactly. it, it, but I think ultimate responsibility always has to come from us. Yeah. No, uh, it's, it's something that I know we've also talked about, but something that I think is going to be so important to be successful mm-hmm. so that you can also try to fix the mistakes if you start making mistakes or whatever that might be, that it's like, it's 
feeling like you are in control of the situation, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think I've done that almost every single year with Yami. There's been like these doubts in my mind. I'm like, okay, I've written down the list now. Like, I feel like I need to do some of this. I need to do some of this. It's usually like yeah. the same things. And usually it's just something in my head that I feel like I need to work on light thrusters because I need to get my speed up on the thrusters because I got long legs, you know, long levers. And I need to do some more ring muscle-ups and long straps. And I need to do a little bit more running just to feel that I'm – I know that my running engine is there, but I need the confidence that it's there. Like certain things that you just need to tweak up on by, by me writing it down, giving him the list. I feel like now I have done my part. Now he will make sure that I will be ready when I'm ready. And then I will trust it that I am ready when I step onto the floor. Yes, very much. Yeah. There's so much to it. I, I love our sport. I just love it. Me too. Because there's so always something. Always something. There's always you know, kind of something. Like at the episode when we were talking about um, unfilled potential, like if we can keep like just feeling like, yep, I can slow get better. Annie, I think it's going to be forever. <laughs> uh, it's going to be forever. Like I feel like there's so many things that I can continue to improve on. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But it's fun though. And that's so fun. And that's so... That's what's so exciting. I'm like, I yeah. don't understand how I'm still here. Like how... Yeah. I am so incredibly grateful for my body, for holding up and making me be able, like those are the shittiest times. That's where it's the hardest to stay motivated is when something is hurting and you're dealing with an injury. But like, that's something that they talk about. That's, I think that's huge. Yeah. Because both of us through multiple injuries, multiple injuries, whether it's be our shoulders, whether it be our back, whether it be, knees hips like we've been through all of it and we'll save that for another time yeah I we'll save that conversation for another time because i think there is certain things that you can that's also something we've talked about there's always something that yeah. you can at least do and yeah. very often from these injuries you create a strength you create something yeah. that you're going getting so much better at that you're going to be able to win events because of because finally you can work on one muscle group or like have make create a real strength for yourself. So there are some benefits, um, but yes. Very true. Saving that for another talk. It would actually be great if you guys would put in comments things that you want us to talk about. We have a long list um, and certain things scheduled that we're going to be uh, addressing, but it's always fun to see what you guys want us to talk about and go and a little bit deeper into please let us know if there's anything like we do read the comments we do see them and if there's something that's coming up again and again like we would love to talk about it yes. i love our open miss- book there's nothing nothing we're hiding <laughs> oh i love, I love this and i miss you i miss you so much my girl this is so great that like yes. i know you're and i'm starting my day but i just got to spend an hour with you. Oh, yes. All right. I hope you get you. Until next time. Until next time. I'll probably talk to you later tonight. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Sweet. Goodbye. Thank you guys for watching the Daughter Podcast. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.